in, in, in our core values, advocate for the client is one of the things in there. How can you advocate for the client if you haven't established a shared understanding of what their goals are? So our proven process interacts with our core values. Everything we do should be filtered through the core values. We have to get a shared understanding. We have to get the right contract, the right title company. Then we manage escrow and we close the deal. That's the process at a really high level, but we cannot advocate for the client if we don't understand what the paperwork says and what they want to do. And to make sure that those two things line up. Sometimes they don't. And now we have a bunch of differences to reconcile. So it's critical to establish that shared understanding. When you're talking to a client, tell me in your own words, what's happening here? What's the story behind this deal? Because in creative finance in particular, there's no such thing as a deal without a story. Creative finance is weird. I'm happy to acknowledge that. So knowing that, we're going to play Mr. or Mrs. Investigator on the front end to make sure we understand that deal, to make sure that it can come out the way we want it to. We have a list of documents needed for a sub two transaction or a seller finance transaction or whatever. But guess what? That's just a checklist. My fear is that somebody will revert to checklist mode and not be objectives oriented. What matters most? The checklist or the outcomes? The outcomes. Absolutely, 100% the outcomes. The ends justify the means. They don't justify the means. I should clarify that. There are certain things that we're unwilling to do. There's fraud. It's easy to commit fraud. It's easy to do all these other things. That's Yeah, but that's how I can get to my goal. Yeah, but we're not going to do that. And we don't like dropping people on their butts halfway through a deal. So it's essential that we establish that shared understanding early in the deal, that we don't just say yes to everything and then figure it out as we go along. We do plenty of that, figuring out as we go along, but not without understanding the, object the objectives. Where do we need to be and where are we now? And that means a lot of questions. And then we have to always be concerned about the customer experience as well. When you're on the front end of a deal, it's going to be time intensive because we need to know, is this a deal we're taking on? When it's in the evaluation phase, we got to know, are we even going to take it on? Because the faster we can give somebody a no, the better we have served that customer. Because when they bring a deal to us, they're assuming we're taking it unless and until we say no. And we have to always manage expectations. So I've taken a course for PMP project management professional. I do have a project plus certification from uh, CompTIA. I have an old, a whole alphabet soup of certifications from my bachelor's in cybersecurity and risk management and IT stuff. A lot of that centered around business analysis and project management. And managing expectations is not, it's never done. It's very important on the front end to manage expectations. That's part of shared understanding. Help me understand what your deal is supposed to be, what your understanding of it is, what your out your intended, what are you trying to accomplish through this deal? And how are you trying to do it? And where are we today? You have to ask whatever questions. You need to elicit the answers that give you enough information to go do the deal in a way that benefits the client. Also understanding who our client is versus who the other parties are is important. It's really interesting the way we're set up. There's A, B, and C. Sometimes B hires us, sometimes C hires us. C is the one that's buying the deal long term, so we don't want to do wrong by anybody. My favorite is when C hires us because we get to kick everybody else's butt. We're tied in with the person who wants the deal long term. So we get to tear everybody else's paperwork apart and say, nope, you need to fix that. Here's an addendum to do this. Here's an addendum to do that. That's probably a point of renegotiation that we should hit before we get too far along in this deal, et cetera. So party C is my favorite one to be hired by, but the bulk of our hires are by party B, the wholesalers, the middlemen, the people who get it under contract and then sell it to somebody else. And unfortunately, the nature of the wholesaler, the party B, is that they're in a rush. They're always after the next deal. All they're looking for is, let me get it under contract on the front end. And then you guys manage escrow. I'll go try to find a buyer, connect it, and then 
they want it off their plate. Oh, we just found this problem. What do you want to do about it? <laughs> Whatever the fastest, shortest possible answer is, is what they generally want. Yes, they're our client, but we also have standards and we want to interact with people in a way that reflects our core values at all times to all parties. There are plenty of times that I've said, I'm not willing to do that. You need a better answer than this. I am committed to helping you and giving you information. And I'll write a custom document to accommodate your needs. But I will not let this person be in the dark about this issue. You can bring it up or I can bring it up. But somebody's got to have the hard conversations. And sometimes that means a deal is on the verge of falling apart. So managing expectations with clients and then those communications are critical.